In games like Minecraft, Seven Days to Die, and many others, you can terraform the terrain using various tools. So let's see how it is done. You will need to have some kind of character controller, so I'm using the FPS character controller which you can find in the Unity Asset Store for free, and you will also need to have some kind of terrain mesh. It is not going to work with the standard Unity's terrain that you can edit. You will either need to model your own terrain, or you can use procedural generation, which if you are interested in, you can watch one of my tutorials. And now we can get straight to the terrain terraforming, so I will create new C Sharp script. I will put it to the object on which I have the mesh filter, because we will need to access the mesh from the terrain to get all of its vertices and then compare the positions, so just put it there. I will create two variables, one will be reference for the mesh filter, so that we can get the mesh, and second one will be reference for the mesh collider, so that we can later refresh the terrain collider based on its new mesh. And because I have this script on the same object on which I have those two components, I can just get them in the start. Once we have that, we can begin working on the modify terrain function, into which we will need to input some position on which we want to modify the terrain. Then we will need to input float as a height by how much we want to modify the height of the terrain. And lastly, some kind of range, which is just going to tell us the area of the terrain that it is going to affect. To modify the mesh, we will also need to get the mesh, and from the mesh we will be able to access all of the vertices, so that later we will loop through all of them and compare their distances. So we have a variable for the mesh, and vector free array for all of the vertices. Now we can just get the mesh from the mesh filter, and get the vertices from the mesh. We will also need to do a bit of calculations with the position, because the position that we are inputting is in word space, and the positions of the vertices is just local position of the vertex in the mesh. So even when we move the whole terrain, the positions of the vertices are not changing. So this is why from the position, we will just need to subtract position of the terrain, which we can get, for example, from the mesh filter. Like this, we should have the correct position, and we can loop through all of the vertices in the mesh, and we can check if the distance is less or equal to the range, and if it is, we'll just modify position of the vertex. We have an index, so that we know which vertex we are currently running through in the for each loop, where we are running through all of the vertices in the mesh, we are checking if the distance between the vertex and the position which we want to edit on the terrain is less or equal than the range. Here, why am I using the vector2 distance when I could easily use vector3, because the vertex is vector3 and the position is also vector3. But we don't actually need to compare the y position, so I'm just comparing the x and z positions. And this is because each of the vertices on the terrain can be holding just one Y position. If we would want to be able to create some kind of caves and cliffs on the terrain, this is not available in this option. We would need to use the marching cubes algorithm to be able to create some more complex terrains. But by the way that I have it set up, it's just that each vertex can be holding just one Y position. So this is why we are just comparing the X and Z. And if this condition is true, we can just add the height to the vertex on the correct index. And to make sure that everything is showing correctly, we'll need to assign the vertices to the mesh, we'll need to assign the mesh to the mesh filter, and to make sure that the collisions are also working properly, we'll need to assign the mesh to the mesh collider. And this is the whole function to terraform the terrain, it is a lot easier than you might have thought. To simplify things, we'll make it that when the player is pressing the left mouse button, it is going to increase the height of the terrain below the player, and if he is pressing the right mouse button, it is going to decrease that height. So in update, we'll just need to check if we are pressing the left or right mouse button, and then we'll call this function and pass in the correct arguments.
I have also made a transform variable for the player, so that we can get his position. Then I'm just checking if we are pressing the left button. If we are, then I'm calling the terraform terrain function. The first parameter is position of the player. Then we have the height, so this is just 0.01. And the range can be something about 5. And if we are pressing the rightmost button, I'm calling the same function, just with the height with minus. And now, as I'm pressing the left mouse button, you can see that the terrain around the player is increasing. And when I press the right mouse button, it is decreasing. The colliders are updating, textures also. So everything seems to be working fine. Obviously, this is probably not the result that you wanted. You wanted to make the player to be able to use a pickaxe to make holes in the ground, which is what we'll do now. To get the correct position where we are aiming, we'll need to use physics.raycast and to get the correct ray, we'll need to use camera, so I will create a variable for the camera. And then we can create new ray, we'll use the function screen position to ray and I will also create hit info so that we can store information about the hit. So we are creating new ray. I'm taking it from the camera for which I have created the variable and I'm using the function screen point to ray which takes a position on the screen and converts it to ray. So the position is just the mouse position and then I'm also creating a hit info so that we can store some information about the hit. Then in the if we are checking if we are pressing the left mouse button and at the same time we are using the physics.raycast, we are inputting the correct ray and we are outing the hit info so that we can later get the position where the ray hit the ground. And I'm also inputting the player reach variable, which I have also created, which is just for the range of the player. And then I'm checking if the ray cast is happening on the terrain layer, for which I have created the layer mask variable. And now, when calling the terraform terrain function, we can just input the correct position from the hit info. So just take it from the hit info that point, which is the point where the ray hit the ground. Now we'll get back to Unity, and don't forget to set the layer of your terrain, and also set all of the variables such as the camera, terrain layer, and the player reach. And now in the game, when I try to edit the terrain, we can see the range in which you are editing it is quite big. So I will just create two variables in the code so that we can adjust it if we need. One will be for the mining efficiency, which will be the height by which we will change it. And second one will be for the mining range, which is the size of the area that will affect. So they are just basic float variables and I will input them when calling the functions here. So the height will be the mining efficiency and the range will be the mining range. And when we want to decrease the height, it will be just minus mining efficiency, just like that. Yep, this seems a bit better that I'm making the terrain higher at the position where I'm looking at, which you can see is correctly working. So I can raise myself or just change height of the terrain at any given position. And with the decreasing of the height, you could make it the same way. Now let's add the pickaxe with a animation so that it looks a bit better. I have downloaded a polypack from the asset store, again I will leave the link in the description. So I will take the prefab pickaxe and put it in the player's hand. To make sure that it is positioned correctly, I suggest you that you take the game window, put it somewhere else, leave it on the 16 by 9 aspect ratio and you can see how the pickaxe is going to look when it is held in the player's hands. Now as we have positioned the pickaxe correctly, we will add the animation for which we'll also need to create animator. So in the assets, I will create animator controller. To the pickaxe object, I will add component animator and add the animator here. Because I have already created the animation, I will just open the animator window. And now take a look into my assets, find the animation and drag it to the animator. Obviously, if you haven't created your animation yet, you can do so. So just drag the animation to the animator just like that. But we don't want it to be playing from the start. So I will also add new state, which will be just idle. 
and make it as the default state. Then I will connect it to the pickaxe animation attack and from it I will again make transition to the idle state so that using a script we will be just able to easily transition between those two states. Now we will do a bit of changing in these transitions. So in the transition from the idle state to the pickaxe attack we can't really change anything but when going from the attack animation to the idle animation I will just make it so that it is starting on 100% of the pickaxe animation so that after the pickaxe animation is finished it will play the idle animation not sooner. So it should look something like this. Now I will add new boolean property so that we can later easily control it through script. So we will go to the parameters, add new one and it will be of type boolean which I will just call is mining. Now as we have these transitions when going from the idle state to the attack state I will add condition for is mining true so when we are in the idle state and is mining is true we will go to the attack state and the other way around so from the attack state we will go to the idle state if is mining is false and also to make sure that the animation is not too quick I will just adjust the speed multiplier to 0.7 of the attack animation. Now we'll go back to the script and we'll just manage setting of the bool. So I will create new variable which will be for the animator. Just like that. In the update when we are pressing the left button I will set bool in the animator is mining to true. So when we are pressing the left button I'm setting the bool in the animator called is mining to true and if we release the button I'm setting it to false. I will also change the mining effectivity when we are pressing the left button to minus so that we are actually mining and not adding the terrain. Yep, and now we can see that the animation is also working correctly but what you might not want is that the terrain is decreasing all of the time which I would like it better if the height of the terrain was decreasing just when the pickaxe hits the ground. And for this we will need to create a coroutine so that we can wait for some amount of time. And how this is going to work? We are going to run the coroutine only when we can mine. We will be able to mine only after the coroutine before has ended. And in the coroutine we will wait for some time. After the time has passed it means that the pickaxe is going to hit the ground. So we are going to call the function to terraform the terrain and then we will again wait for some time to make sure that the animation has finished. In my case the pickaxe hits the ground in about half of the animation so this is going to be pretty simple for me. I will just need to have a variable for the total length of the animation, the speed multiplier of the animation so that I can calculate the total length and just divide this by 2 so that we wait by the time of the half of the animation. This is not the most elegant way to do it, it would be better to just access the length of the animation through the animator, but for these purposes I am showing it to you in a simplified version. So we have a variable for the animation length and animation speed. The animation length you can just find it when you select the animation. Right here we see that it is 0 0.967 and the speed is obviously the speed that we have in the animator. So I have 0.7 and the way that we calculate the correct time is the animation length divided by the animation speed. And because I want to get just half of the time of the animation I'm dividing this by 2. After this time has passed we can terraform the terrain. And I will also move the raycast in here so that we are not checking for it all the time. So right now it looks like that. We wait for the half time of the animation. Then I just move the part with the ray, the hit info. I am checking for the raycast and if at the time when the animation is halfway through so that the pickaxe is almost hitting the ground, we are checking if the ray is hitting the terrain, if so we call the function to terraform the terrain and in the update when we are checking if we are pressing the left button 
We also need to start the coroutine. But we don't want to be triggering the coroutine all the time. We want to trigger it only when the last coroutine has finished, so I will create new boolean variable if we can mine. So we have the boolean if we can mine, and in update, if I'm pressing the left mouse button and we can mine, I'm starting the coroutine and setting the bool in the coroutine. I'm at start setting the can mine to false because it is already running, so we obviously can't mine again. And after the coroutine has finished, we are setting the can mine to true. Just don't forget to input your own animation length and speed, and now we can see if it is going to work. So when I click, we can see the animation is playing correctly. I can even hold the button and it is still playing. And when I dig into the ground, you can see that the height of the terrain is changing at the exact time when the pickaxe is hitting the ground, which looks really nice. Making the terrain higher obviously still looks the same, which just shoots us in the sky, but you can see that we are able to dig anywhere and it looks pretty good. This was just an introduction into how you can make your terrains modifiable. We still can't do make any caves or cliffs. You can see that this is not really working, which is because each point of the terrain can hold just one height value. So if you would want to make some caves, we would need to use the marching cubes algorithm, for which I am planning to be making a video soon. And now it is only up to you to add all of the various tools and terrain types. I hope that this video was useful. If there are any other tutorials that you would want me to make, then feel free to tell me down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt Tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.